Hey guys, we back with another recording of our life, beginning and always. Last time I was playing, I just finished, I believe, step two. And yeah, we went through all of these pathways that we could. And now I guess, and then summer ended. Yes. God, look how amazing our room is. There was no denying it. Today was the very last day of summer. Tomorrow, you were heading to class. You were excited to go back. Anxiety not at your stomach. It was a bummer. It, your feelings were muddled. I swear, like, any event that I know that's gonna happen tomorrow, like, my, like, stomach will be, like, turning, like, crazy. I don't know why. Even if it's, like, a small, mundane task, if I know there's an event tomorrow, even if I, if I do want to do it or I don't want to do it, no matter what, I, like, I get that, like, anxiety feeling in my gut, and I'm like, but it's just, I, I don't know why this happens. <laughs> so I have to go with that often. Going back to school meant handing over the autonomy you had over the past weeks. You had very little control over what you did at school, at school or who you shared a class with. And it was with a heavy heart that you chose your outfit for your final day of freedom. So I mean, if we're 13, like they said, I think that means we're going into 8th grade. Right? Um... It was with a heavy heart that you chose your outfit for your final day of freedom. Life was going to be different. You had come to think of the summer vacation as the norm. But school sucked up the majority of the year, whereas the summer vacation was just a respite in the middle. So rather than it being different, it was kind of a return to the normal. What did your normal life really mean? You considered you how fondly your moms talked about the summer vacation as kids. You dimly recognized that one year the pattern of school and summer itself would be over for good. It was hard to imagine. You got distracted one arm still out of sleeve. You pulled it through and put your mind back to the present. That's, this season had brought about plenty of changes of its own, like Kira's visit, though that too was coming to an end today. You were, finally, you were happy you'd finally gotten the chance to know her. You had become extremely fond of her. You didn't really like her. Your mind wasn't made up on, on how you felt about her. You didn't care one way or the other. I think I would go with uh, my mind wasn't made up on how you felt about her. Cause I can tell like with a coat he kind of has a bad feeling about her but at the same time he still loves her I think so like I'm, I'm just not I'm not sure some of her mannerisms grated on you but you liked other things it was hard to come to the to come to a conclusion you finished dressing which was good Cove would be there any moment you'd agree to see his mom off together officially the plan was that he would come over to you to bring you around to his house when she was ready to set off but you both knew that you'd be hanging out for at least a little while beforehand. Kira's visit had troubled Cove when it first happened. It had been a sudden change, thanks to Mr. Holden's infamous tendency to surprise people. But once he was able to adjust, he'd been in pretty good spirits with her around. It was a relief for everyone. The next thought that crossed your mind was, it would only be polite to get the door for Cove. You went downstairs to wait. You couldn't wait to see Cove, so you went downstairs to meet him when he arrived. Um... Cove knew your house well enough, you could lounge in your room to wait for him. Um, yeah, let's just chill, man, you know? You made yourself comfortable on your bed. This was where you'd be hanging out, so there wasn't much point in going downstairs just to come straight back up again. It wouldn't be the first and probably won't be the last time that Cove brought himself up to your room without you taking him there. A knock at the door broke you from the idle daydream you've been having about endless summers. You recognize the sound immediately, different from the cheery tune Ma rapped out when she wanted your attention, our mom's drift beats, and all of us tended to skip knocking completely. Those knocks were just hard enough to be heard and uncommonly long pauses in between. They were Cove's. Come in. Cove opened the door, smiling casually, as he caught your eye. Hi, Cove. He stepped further into the room with other guests. You might have offered them a seat, but you and Cove were along the path. We're long past those sensitive stages of friendship. Your room was as familiar to him as his own. You watched as Cove sat down in your desk chair, his preferred spot. He rolled it closer to the bed to make it easier to chat, tweaking the angle so that he was fully uh, he was facing you fully. Once happy with the position, he leaned in towards you, hands held in his lap. His actions weren't the ones of someone who planned on moving from his spot anytime soon, even though he had an appointment to keep together that day. When is your mom leaving? We've got some time. She still's got a shower and stuff before she goes. She didn't want it. She didn't want me to just keep hanging around while she was doing that. He lifted his head, his gaze drifting out through the window, and chuckled. I can't believe she's already leaving. Just when I'm getting used to her being there every day. 
He leaned back in the chair, a wiry smile tickling his cheeks. Yeah, he nodded. She'll be back. Time is going by so fast. I mean, I agree with that sentiment, but it's like... In context, that seems kind of weird to say. Um... I probably, I probably would just say yeah. Mm. He shook his head as if shaking off the topic like a dog whipping off water following a dip in the sea. Cove perched his elbow, on, cur perched an elbow on the chair's arm and propped his jaw against his curled hand. There was a natural ease to his mo movements, a familiarity from the echoes of all the times before when he sat that in that same position. This was <sighs> so hard. I hate guys' voices. <laughs> this was a really nice summer. Totally, it was alright. I'm glad we got to spend so much time together. Eh, yeah, I'll type better. I'm looking forward to the next. He nodded. You're dreaming. I'm glad we got to spend so much time together. Ko still nestled cozily in your chair, smiled at your response. How are your fish doing? Really good. Things in the tank are stable and everybody looks healthy. That was nice to hear. You learned from Cove how hard it was to maintain an aquarium. Flash. <laughs> oh, I forgot I named a fish. Flash has been busy. keeping keeps darting between the plants and out again. When I walk by, like a game of peekaboo, or hide and seek. Yeah. Cove idly glanced out the window. He gave a resigned sigh. It's gonna be harder to surf, you know, with school. It's getting colder out. I don't want to get rusty. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without surfing. I like surfing, but I wish it liked me. <laughs> I'm over surfing now. Surfing's cool when we can. Sorry, Cove. Um. I like surfing, but I wish it liked me. I can't stick to the board. He gave a light smile coupled with a shrug as response. Z Cove! The sudden call from downstairs caught you both unaware. You'd nearly forgotten the world outside your room. From the guilty look on his face, Cove had done the same. Just had a call. Cove's mom is ready to go. <laughs> if you're quick, she might keep the mandated monthly smothering to a minimum. You doubted that, but it was nice that mom and Miss Pier Priest had their- oh. Yeah, I guess she wouldn't have the same- she, I guess she took her maiden name back. Miss Priest had their strange sense of humor in common. Your eyes met Cove's wordlessly. You headed downstairs together. Each step on the way, there was a painfully slow, like- was painfully slow, like he was trying to delay the inevitable. His whole, whole body tensed leaving the house, and Cove froze altogether before you both could cross the street. Oh. The door is open. Dad must be taking her stuff out. He swallowed hard. She's really gonna leave. He smiled at him reassuringly. You gave us back a path. His yeah. You rested your arm on his hand on his arm. This isn't the last time you'll ever see her. Yeah, she probably say that. I know, I know, but I got used to having her here. Yeah. It was hard to think of a world where you didn't have both of your moms living at home with you. So you couldn't even imagine how hurt Cove must have been feeling no feeling knowing his mom was leaving. You thought you saw his bottom lip quiver just before he turned his head away from you. We don't have to head over if you don't want to. No, it'll be worse if I, if I miss her leaving. Okay. At that, some of the conflict wearing on his face eased a bit. Together, you went across the street and inside his house, finding his parents in the living room surrounded by his mom's packed things. Hey, kids. Good timing. I just called a taxi. Hmm. And hi, Z. So, glad I get to see you today. It was fabulous getting to know you this summer. I finally got to put a face to the name I've heard so many times. She winked and Cove pouted on cue over the teasing. I'm really happy I got to meet you, too. I hope you had a good time visiting. Bye. He didn't say anything. Um... See, so like, I don't really mean it, but I feel like I respond with this anyways when people, like, say they had a good time meeting me anyways so I, i'd probably go with that hopefully it won't be too long before we see each other again nodding kira turned her attention back to her boys she pat a clip on the arm with a warm smile and then she enveloped cove in a crushing hug initially cove's forms could break free but from her grip but his mom was unfazed and kept him locked in place heartbeats later he gave in and hugged her back tightly i'm so glad i'm so happy this trip was exclusive this is hard I'm so happy this trip was a It's so hard to say success in that voice, and I don't know why. Whatever, you got it, you got it. Cliff looked like he was bursting with pride. Well, not a 100% success, but still a passing grade, I think. 
Thinking back on everything that happened this summer, he started to look sheepish. Sheepish. Cliff scratched the side of his head, and an awkward chuckle escaped Cove. Your way, the pool. There are ways it could have gone smoother. I'm still keeping that in mind for the future. All right. Good for you, Cliff. Then I'll be trying harder to say more in the loop. He watched as Cove smiled softly at both his parents, and he felt relieved, seeing how much the whole family had come together since he first met them. Despite any underlining troubles, love was still there. After that, it wasn't long before the taxi arrived. Rolling up in front of the house and in clear view of the open door, Kira stood up smiling sadly. That's my ride. Yeah. The matching reply got a chuckle out of Kira as you all filed out of the house, father and son, and went with Kira's bags in hand. Once outside, you spotted your family waiting by the street, and to your surprise, Derek was also with them. He said uncomfortably, and he waved as soon as you noticed him. What's up? Hey Z, hey, hi Cove. When did you get here? My dad dropped me off just a little bit ago. Thought I could visit one more time before school started. Sorry. We picked a busy time. Sorry. Derek couldn't even couldn't even look at Cove. He nervously kept rolling a pebble with the bottom of his shoe. Sorry. I wasn't even thinking that your mom would be leaving today. I'm sorry, dude. What? You're not interrupting anything. You're always welcome here. <laughs> it would have been sad if I didn't get to say goodbye before leaving. Derek came to hang out often, so it was inevitable that the two had met at some point this season. I think so, too. It was apparent Derek would have preferred to have gotten there at a more opportune moment. He never liked seeming impolite, but their reassuring words soothed his worries. The tension he was holding in his body lessened, and he looked like he was feeling much more like himself. Bye, Derek. It was fun getting to know you. <laughs> Bye, ma'am. Uh... Is there anything I can do to help? Uh. <laughs> Don't worry yourself over that. We're just about to set. In that short amount of time, Cliff had gathered and packed the bags into the trunk. Kira took one last look at everyone and sighed. Alright, I don't want to keep the driver waiting. It's time to head out. The little crowd that had formed around started their chorus of farewells and farewells and well wishes. Traveling, but Kira still made no move to get into the taxi. She placed her attention on Cove. I'll call when I get to the airport and when I make it to Nevada. Also, you better call the moment you walk in the door at home. Otherwise, we'll be wondering all night if you got into trouble on the way there. And could you call tomorrow, too, so I tell you how school went? Of course! I want to hear all about it! Kira put a hand on Cove's head and affectionately ruffled his hair one last time. She then let go, only to move on to squeezing his cheeks in her hands instead. M Mom! <laughs> I love you so much, baby! She was chuckling by the time she freed him and rounded things off with a small tap to the tip of his nose. Cove rubbed at his face with a grin. Finally, she walked to the car while waving and took her seat in the taxi. Cliff hooked an arm around Cove's shoulder and kept him close at it as he began to pull away. For a moment, Cove looked up at his dad and then wrapped an arm around across his Bye. back. Bye, Mom. Bye, safe travel safe. His voice, I can't figure that out. The dad... Kira rolled down the window and stuck her head out as out of it. She waves back while blowing kisses at Cove and Cliff. See you again. Before she was out of sight, you decided to call out with your family and hers. Wave goodbye. Watch quietly. Um, I'd probably just wave goodbye. As the taxi headed down the road, you stuck your head in the air to send her off. The cab turned down another road and completely disappeared from view. Cove let go of his dad and took a few steps out into the empty street, till, still looking in the direction of his, mo his mom went. He smiled quietly, deeply, deep in thought. You got the impression Cove was feeling better than he was earlier. He was finally content with the way things were. You jumped a bit when your mom put a hand on your shoulder, pulling you away from your thoughts. She smiled when you looked at her. <sighs> this was a great vacation, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. You're not in agreement. You shrugged, I don't know. Summer isn't over until the second I fall asleep. Um... Yeah. And that's what I was hoping to hear. Cove walked back over to the group, still genuinely happy. Derek grinned at him, welcomingly, and, and everyone else there smiled at him, even Elizabeth. Well? Ma clapped her hands together, bringing everyone's attention back to the present. It's almost lunchtime. I think I'll put something together, special together. Her eyes sparkled with a plan, and Mom smiled. I bet you could use some help with that. That'd be absolutely wonderful. Derek glanced between the two, his eyebrows furrowed. Is there something I could do? Your mom's exchanged a fond expression. Ma shook her head. How sweet. <laughs> Derek, but it's alright. 
It's not your job. Technically, your dad left you under Cliff's watch. You're meant to be taken care of by him, not doing chores for the neighbors. Mom laughed a little over her own joke. You watched Eric look away discouraged. I don't mind. He was a little bashful about it. You wonder if Mom's joke had just reminded him that he was initially meant to be invited to lunch. It was getting a little awkward. Mom grinned sympathetically. Her comment was meant to lighten the mood, but not bring it back down. Ma tried again to get things moving forward. Why don't you kids go have fun? You all can come back in about an hour. We'll make enough for everyone. Mom nodded in agreement. <laughs> Another stunning idea, Lonnie. Thanks. Thank you. That sounds like a plan, then. I don't want to cramp your style. I've got some stuff to work on, so I can be out of your hair this afternoon. You should come by later, too. No reason you should be the odd man out. Mom seemed amused as Cliff rubbed his neck nervously. He grinned a wavering, but please smile. Thanks very much. I appreciate the invite. He looked over the assembled crowd with knowing glances. I can help too. With as many people as you're feeding, it's going to be a lot of food. Mm. Didn't you hear what we told Derek? It wouldn't be fair to make you cook when we're the ones who are inviting you in. Ma raised an eyebrow when Cliff waved it off. I insist. Derek would be missing time with his pals. This would be a break for me. I'm quite the chef. Ma and Mom exchanged further glances before Mom shrugged. An airtight argument. If you're sure, we'll be happy to have you, Cl Chef Cliff. Cliff grinned widened and seemed more hyped than you expected him to be about helping with lunch. Co shook his head, a fond smile on his face. Then all us gr oh. then all us grown ups people will be heading inside. I assume the rest of you kiddos are staying out. Maybe not all of them. Ma tilted head, a silent question for Elizabeth, which is her thought for a moment. <laughs> I'll stay with the kids. With your mom smiled at her, while Derek and Cove didn't seem to appreciate her phrasing. But with the plan decided, all three parents waved and headed for your house. It was just you teenagers now. Elizabeth looked at you and the others, a curious expression on her face. So. What now? You silently wondered if Elizabeth only stayed out with you to avoid getting roped into work. Then again, she could just genuinely want to hang out. You couldn't tell with your sister. Cove spoke up after no one else did to answer Elizabeth's question. Want to go down to the shopping street? It's been a while and... I don't think there's a lot of other things we can agree on. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Sounds awesome to me. Unlike you guys, I haven't been there. Th I haven't been there a thousand and one times. It's new to me. 